make sure all of your interior doors are open, and I mean all of them. And your exterior doors and windows are completely closed and locked. The lock actually closes them just a little bit tighter. We'll need to turn off all the mechanical ventilation systems. So that includes these exhaust fans, the kitchen exhaust fans. You'd see this is ducted to the outside. So making sure that's off. Also need to make sure your dryer's off. Um, probably already is, but if it's not, make sure the dryer's off. Figure out the thermostat for a second. Off. And lastly, if you have a conditioned attic like this one does, all of that volume up there needs to be accounted for. And we don't care about the tightness of the ceiling to the attic. What we care about is the tightness of the attic itself. So we need to open this up. This home has an exhaust ventilation system located in the attic. So that is going off. Otherwise I'm gonna get a slightly better blower door result because it's not gonna account for the amount of air that's being thrown out by that fan. Okay, now we can start actually setting up the blower door now that the house is ready. First step, my outside reference hose. It's kind of rainy, so the best spot is probably going to be tucked up right in this corner. So that's where my hose is going to be. That's how the hose setup went. I'll try to keep as much of it up here as I can out of the rain. That way I don't have to deal with it being all wet later. Alright, next step, setting up the frame. I'm going to pop all these loose. I have my uh, crossbar permanently installed with these screws. So I don't have to take it in and out. We're going to set it, preferably, depending on how the door is set up. This one's set up ideally. I'm going to set it up right where the door actually seals up against the weather stripping. First thing I'm going to do is press it outwards against the, uh, against the door frame. I just start at the top, tighten that one, go to the bottom, tighten that one, and then finally, middle one. Next one going up. I only need one side to get up at the top. Tighten that side, then I can deal with the other one. Alright, next up, we gotta throw out our canvas to be able to put the frame on it. I like to fold it this way because I can do this. Space here too, so we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna grab the frame and set it right here on this canvas. Now I'm lining up the bottom right in between the velcro straps where it's gonna end up going and slowly walk it down. Starting at the bottom. going in. Always start on the side with the door. Otherwise you're not going to get it in. So I got, I got my one side in and now I'm just going to essentially rock it in just like it is the door. A couple little taps get it going. Now at the bottom, I want to make sure that I'm right on top of this threshold and there's no gap. Back that up a little bit. Now I'm going to pull my hose, not through this, but through this hole. Alright, now I got my frame in. All of these levers I have to get canned. That tightens everything down just a little bit more. Got all over the place here. Yeah, now I can put my fan in. Drop the bottom on first. Notice how I had it too me the entire time. Get that started around. Come to the top. Make sure that you're completely over this white block and you're over the center line of the fan. Then this little logo strap. Hold the weight of the fan suspended. Just like that. Next up. 
I like see if I can get the the manometer started because this thing starts up pretty slow. So I'm gonna go ahead get that going. Set that aside. Get our power supply. It hooks into these hooks that the crossbar fits into. Essentially has a mini crossbar on it. And I'll hook it right there. Alright, the easiest way to get your manometer set and running is just to use the tubing assistant. We're doing building tightness. We are depressurizing. Uh, we are located inside the building right now. This is the model fan. It's alright. And it will tell me exactly where my hoses are supposed to be going. Not the right colors, but my fan on the right goes to the fan. Outside, it's going outside. Once I confirm all that, I can hit continue. And it automatically switched all the settings that I need to what I need for um, an infiltration blower door test. Right now I want to explain how the blower door works. How does this, with whatever pressure is coming in, give me a, a cubic foot per minute? Well, what's happening is we have these rings and right now they're all closed off. But when we're actually testing, we're gonna have either that one out or the next size out or the next size out. <clears throat> now the way that the sensor works is this hose is going eventually to this hose and this ring is sealed off from the outside except it has these holes. And this plate is at a very specific depth relative to the fan and based on the geometry and size of this gap and the pressure that it reads, it knows how much air is passing through this gap at any given point. Now the reason there's rings is there, there's only a certain range that it can give you an accurate reading based on the size. So while I could, I could pressurize anything by opening this all the way, if I'm not moving enough air past it, it won't give me a reading because it won't know what to do. So I have to start restricting the airflow to create a greater pressure differential right here in order to get an accurate reading. And this manometer, you, you input which ring you're on and it will automatically do the conversion from the pressure that it's reading to the CFM based on the ring that you selected. You'll notice that we are reading flow at 50. That 50 is 50 pascals of pressure. Currently I'm getting between one and two pascals pressure difference between inside and outside. That's just because of the wind blowing. Now, for infiltration testing, we have a standard of 50 pascals. So when I turn this motor up, I'm gonna to try to reach as close to 50 pascals on this side as I can, and however much air I'm throwing out to reach that pressure is my leakage rate. Now the at 50 is saying, okay, well, reaching exactly 50 is pretty hard. And as you can tell, just from the wind blowing, I'm jumping all around. So hitting exactly 50 is just unrealistic. So what at 50 does is it takes the data that it's receiving and will give you the flow rate out as if it were to be at 50. So even if you're at 45, it'll be able to predict what leakage rate you'd be getting if you were to be at 50. So you don't have to be dead on, but you do have to be within three pascals. Now to actually run the test, the first thing we're gonna do is set a baseline. This is gonna run for at least 10 seconds and it's going to help zero out the pressure difference from inside and outside based on the wind. So we're basically eliminating the effect of the wind outside. On a windier day, I'll let this run longer. If there's no wind at all, I'll just do the 10 seconds. It's a little bit windy, 
I think about 20 is all right. Enter. Now we're ready to go, but I'm not gonna use open fan because I know this house is not that leaky. If you didn't know, if you don't, you're at a new builder or you, you haven't done this before, sorry, start on the smallest one that you can, which would be C, and keep changing them until you're able to reach 50 Pascal. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guess the A is gonna get me there. And I'm gonna run with that. Now you can see flow at 50, we're on ring A. Our baseline is clearly set right there. You notice that the pressure has gotten much closer to zero after the baseline. All right, house is ready, baseline set, settings are ready. Let's start the test. I should have mentioned this, but you need to run your baseline with the fan closed, otherwise, well, you have a big hole in the house, and obviously it's not gonna do it. This says B on it because the center of it is B. This one says A on it. Don't crank it up too fast, the whole thing might collapse on you. So I'm within my range right now. I only need three Pascals within 50. So this is perfectly acceptable. However, I want to be extra accurate. I can do a timed average, which I'm going to do for 10 seconds. So this is going to take the next 10 seconds to give me an average rating, and that's what I'm going to take. I guess I need to be ring. Go to B ring. So this is pretty interesting. That is pretty darn tight, especially for a townhome, or at least what we're used to with these townhomes. What they just did this morning on this unit is install backdraft dampers or flappers, whatever you want to call them, that prevent air from leaking through the exhaust fans when they're not operating. That alone has dropped this about 200 CFM from the original test. The original test value was 872, so almost 200 CFM less just by putting backdraft dampers on the exhaust fans. That's kitchen exhaust, uh, the dryer vent, and all the bathroom exhaust fans. Not only can I quantify the amount of leakage or the total size of the hole in the home, I can also tell where it is. Not perfectly, but somewhat. And this is how you do that. So I've opened up the fan to the A ring size because I want to put less stress on the motor because I'm going to be running it for an extended period. Um, that means I don't care about this side of the equation. All I really care about is reaching 50 Pascals. So we're going to go ahead and get up to 50. That's close enough. Now I got my infrared camera. I'm gonna walk around and see what I can find. Now these exhaust fans um, are, they have flappers now, but the flappers don't make a perfect seal. You can see there's still some outside air coming in on this hot day, um, but I don't feel very much coming out of it, whereas before you could clearly tell. Can't get my camera to focus or get the right angle. Um, so we'll put a picture over the screen, but right back there, you can kind of see it, is a flapper behind the fan. That's where the duct exits and goes to the, or where the fan exits and it goes to the duct in the attic. Remember to return everything to the position it was when you arrived. That includes turning the ventilation back on and your AC back to whatever the builder or homeowner wants it set to. Here's a little tip for you. When you're taking this down, to make it easy on yourself, pop all the Velcro first, ready on the bottom. Pop 
closely at it. And then after that's all done, then you can pop all your cans. And then when you pull it out, you get a nice clean separation of the canvas and the frame. Now for the frame, I like to put it away like this. Both of these slide down. Loose, loosening the center, um, tightening the one that I just did, loosening all the center pieces. Tighten that because I'm done with that. Now I can tighten these up. And we're done. I'm going to show you a trick on how to fold it up in ways. First of all, it looks nice, keeps your canvas in good condition, and it lets you throw it out in a very easy way and try to set it up. So, fold it right in half. In half is directly where the top of the, or the bottom of the logo is on the side. Very easy to set up like this. Now, I'm gonna put it down, fold it, and then in half again. Once I have it like this, I'm gonna flip it over, and I do third, Third, on that side, a third side of the Velcro, and a third right here. And you end up with this perfect set of the, uh, the logos right there, and your windows right here. You're not creasing your window, you're not going to end up with a cracked window over time by doing this, or at least not as soon as you would otherwise. The other cool part about this is when you go put it in, you get this nice little setup of the logos right there. My secret to keeping my hose uh, free of tangles. Um, I'm wrapping it around my arm, but on this hand I'm keeping an open circle instead of like this. If I do this, I'm, I'm forcing this to go wherever my hand goes. As you can see, if I twist this, it starts to want to untwist. So I'm going around, I've got my open ring, and I'm, I'm letting gravity kind of unwind the hose ahead of me. I haven't fully unwound this hose in a while, so it's kind of tangled, or twisted up rather. So I'm kind of doing sections at a time. Use gravity to get some of that twist out. And there we go. Nice and round. If you don't do this, you end up with hoses that are like this. And the whole mess. Yeah, I was just to... Here's how the hose setup went. Try to keep as much of it up here as I can out of the rain. That way I don't have to deal with it being all wet later. 